Okay, the, the way it's going now, it can only get worse. Mm -hmm. I would say in another three or four years, like, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a scheme of zombies. And it, it, it's frightening to me what's going to happen if we don't, if somebody doesn't understand just what these young people are facing today, because I don't think there's ever a generation that's had to face this. I don't deny that there is a problem with some members of the community, but I am not at all sure that stressing it publicly helps. And I do want to say that the majority of the people of Craig Miller are perfectly decent law-abiding citizens who do not like what goes on in their midst. In the last couple of years, I would say, and I think it's basic to this deliberate policy of attempting to run the area down, that uh, the area is now starting to lose hope and it's like uh, two steps forward and three back. Three years ago, community leaders in Edinburgh's Craig Miller district were expressing hope and confidence in the future. Today they're talking about a powder keg of tension that's ready to explode at any time. Recently there's been an alarming rise in theft, fire raising, illegitimacy and child battering. Attempted suicides are three times the Edinburgh average. Oxfam has given the district £15,000 to be spent over three years, a move which led to Craig Miller being labelled a third world area. Unemployment is now running at double the Scottish average. This has brought misery and hopelessness with an increase in family rows and mental illness. The most important factor is undoubtedly the mass unemployment, which is hitting this area very, very seriously indeed. But the other cutbacks have also had an adverse effect in the area on housing and elsewhere. I mean, if we could get a lot more work around this area, that would help for a start. And we did get a new industrial estate started some years ago, at the Scottish Development Agency Industrial Estate, but removing the regional development grants in Edinburgh has not helped there, and of course we've had the, the massive slump anyway in the British economy. But work would help. The Gormleys are a family of 12. Theirs is a typical story. I mean, this could be a, a good scheme. It has been really a good scheme. But it's just... With unemployment, there's nowhere for them to go, and, well, they've got nothing. How many of your family are unemployed at, at this time? Uh, is they unemployed? Yeah, it's unemployed, but there's only two in my family working out of 12. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten. Yeah. How did they manage to get jobs? Well, they were just a bit lucky, you know, they just got, uh, somebody told them about it, and they just went up and got started, you know. Do you ever feel depressed about what's happening in Craig Miller? I mean, are you ever, ever was, down or disheartened by things? Well, certainly the big change in the years, do you know what I mean? In that years, like, it used to be good at one time, but now it's... How much do you get a week to survive on? £25. What do you get with that? How do you survive on that? Oh, hard. <laughs> Very hard. Where does the money go? On the light, the gas and for coal. What about food? Well, I've only got a tenner for that. Have you any luxuries at all? No. The eviction rate in Craig Miller is the highest in Scotland. More than 400 houses are now empty and boarded up. Some claim the city council is making matters worse by channeling problem families into the district instead of spreading them throughout the city. Hey, I'm convinced that uh, there is an actual systematic uh, rundown of the area, which if it is true, it's quite scandalous. Could you expand on that? Well, we've spent over the last 10 years must run into millions of pounds of modernising existing good stock council houses. Uh, houses that were built in the 30s are still standing today. As fast as we're modernising these houses, behind us the houses are emptying uh, because of the failure by the council to uh, get tenants uh, fitted up in these houses. We don't deliberately create ghettos. But there's no doubt that if an area acquires for itself a bad reputation, then the people who would be most useful in that community won't go there. They, when we offer a house in some areas, people will prefer to live with their mother-in-law rather than take it up. It's not we who direct people into problem areas. It is the decent people who choose not to go there. You see a deliberate policy to run the area down. Why would the council want to do that? Well, I think you've seen an example of the experience in Pilton, that uh, what the Tory administration, I think even from the government level, uh, are deciding that uh, the answer to the housing schemes are to bring the big developers in and uh, try and uh, modernise these houses and sell them on open market. 
to potential uh, house buyers. There are thought to be around 100 heroin addicts in the district and many others involved in glue sniffing. These problems are something that the community itself is tackling by making a video called Growing Up in Craig Miller. Taking part will be a group of local teenagers. It's no really as bad as what a lot of people make it, but we get bad for a lot of places just because Nidra's got a bad name. What about the situation where there was a near riot a couple of weeks back? Well, the lights went and then everybody just started breaking into shops and that. Why, why, why did everyone start to do that sort of thing? The yeah. money. The land were off and thought it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> is there a lot of that happened in Craig Miller? Yeah. All the time. We've talked about the time, we've had a chance. Any, any chance you get, you break in the song. What for? Money. To get money? Yeah. Are things that bad? No. Uh, yeah. Is it just boredom, you and yourself? There was nothing to do in that, but that club, that's a bit better than that. Yeah. Served us very good. Yeah. Just kept a lot of people out of trouble. What about the, the incidents of sort of glue sniffing in this area? Is that is that going on a lot? All the time. You name it was happening, but, but you can say there's everything's happening here. You mean hash, drugs, everything. What about heroin? Well, that's just as big a problem as glue sniffing here now. Is it? Why? Yeah. Bigger problem. How easy is it to get heroin in Craig Very easy. Oh, it's very easy to get heroin. Too easy. Well, what sort of age um, are children taking heroin? Uh, it's 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 not not children. 15 upwards, no, no really. The young ones take it. No, it's uh, kind of we're talking about that last night in the news. Yeah. The Belfast. Yeah. There's no, it's no as bad as that. So, w what do you think is causing all this? Uh, obviously, what? unemployment has something to do with it. It's I mean. Unemployment, but uh, it's just that it's, it's that easy for crime in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything gets, everything's getting done. Keep telling us a lot. What What do you think could be done for for young people your age to, to help out and stop you from uh, being on the streets so much and sniffing glue and all the rest of it? Yeah. Anybody here got a job? No. <laughs> I got two I suppose that doesn't give you very much hope for the future. Do you feel much hope in the future? No. Where do, where do you think that you'll, you'll go from here? Where do you see life taking you from here? Grass market. Grass market. <laughs> but you know, crime, drugs, glue sniffing, everything you can think of, like, it's terrible down here. There's nothing else to do down here. Like, I mean, I've never seen nothing like this in, in my experiences. You know, and I've stayed here all my life. What are the kids doing? Well, they're, they're glue sniffing, they're breaking into houses, breaking into cars, breaking into neighbours' houses, which is worse. You know, I mean, it's no, they've not got any scruples or principles now. Have you been able to pinpoint yourself exactly why they stoop to that sort of thing? Unemployment and not enough money. You know, I mean, they've no clothes and, you know, they've not got decent clothes. They're not provided for by anybody. You know, so they go and steal. I'm not condoning them stealing, it's not right them stealing, but I mean they go and steal because they've, they've got nothing. To try and combat this, we have uh, in the past years brought additional policing into the area. Uh, we have different types of policing to cover different contingencies. Um, in the long term, uh, we have area men who are doing school liaison and liaison with residents associations, etc to try and get through to people and change their ways and that's a very long-term effort. The district's teenagers have been coming under fire recently but many residents think they're worthy of praise. When I come to Craig Miller, my sister says to me, oh you can't stay there, that's an awful place to go to. I says, listen, I've got to go where I'm sent to. The house, house is nice, the stay was nice, everything was nice, neighbours were nice. I says, what else could I ask for? You know this? A wee garden, ornamental garden. You know this, I've done that. And people say, that won't last five minutes in Craig Miller, you know. I say, well, I'll take a chance. You know this, I've been here ten years, and the children of Craig Miller never touched my house. They're terrific. So some are happy enough in Craig Miller. But evidence suggests that many are giving up in despair and leaving. This has contributed to a fall in school roles, and now the district's only secondary school, Castle Bray, is under threat of closure. But the fight is on to save it. If you remove the school from Craig Miller, you're removing a, a major facility from the, the, the area. Uh, an area that is in the process of building up its own identification, of building up its own confidence in the future. Uh, if you take away from the area its ability to influence the education of the 
12 to 18 year olds, then you take away from them the ability to build up a lot of their self-confidence in a community sense. The community's sense of identity is kept alive by Craig Miller Festival Society, the district's largest employer providing over 200 jobs. The society's efforts touch almost every sphere of local life. It runs six buildings and owns two buses, caravans and a community ambulance. It organizes weekly playgroups, discos and youth clubs along with day centers for the handicapped and housebound. A quarter of a million pounds from an EEC anti-poverty program has helped fund the work, but European involvement has ended. The program went for five years, I am, and I think the, the Germans vetoed the program and it finished. So we were always under the impression that the nine member countries would have a commitment to pick it up, the tabs up when it was finished. But in fact, that didn't happen with ours. Only three posts were funded. In fact, at one point we had to have four voluntary redundancies. So we lost 22 staff plus four voluntary redundancies, plus all the money. People's expectations are raised. So what do you tell them? Although vastly underfunded, the society's work continues. Youngsters learn an assortment of crafts, including joinery, needlework and printing, in a society-sponsored youth training scheme. Several pensioners' homes are being brightened up with new wallpaper and a lick of paint by teenagers of both sexes. But this scheme too is under threat due to government cutbacks. Another thorny subject in Craig Miller is urban aid. The government has already stated that 30 million pounds lies unspent. The community here feel this is farcical when local projects are suffering and when other new projects could be set up. Well, they keep telling us there's millions and millions of pounds of urban aid. Uh, we accept that, but what happens is that you can hardly get your hands on it. We've got th hundreds of projects here in Nidran Kremala which could prove successful projects under urban aid, and uh, we get very, very uh, little response. The, the basic problem is this, that we, the city council, have to pay one quarter of any urban aid, the cost of any urban aid project. So. Uh, even when we, take, when we take up money from urban aid, we still have to find one quarter of that, the cost of that job. And, of course, we have to find that from the rates, and we can't jack the rates up uh, enormously, and we have limitations from government upon the total amounts of money that we can spend. So although there is money for the whole of Scotland to tap for urban aid, the fact that we have to pay a quarter of it ourselves is a real limitation on how much we can take up. The Festival Society believes community arts is one of the keys to unlock creative potential and give people from deprived areas a greater sense of self-worth. Success in this sphere has been quite startling. The 14th century ruin of Craig Miller Castle playing no small part. The Arts and Craig Miller have done so much for me. It all happened about eight years ago. My mother used to work as a neighbourhood worker for the Festival Society. She took us along to a drama group. And it wasn't just any old drama group. They took an interest in you. It's such a friendly, warm atmosphere. They help you very much. They introduce you to a lot of things. They let you do what you want backstage or on stage. At the Craig Miller Festival Society, I never been, I would just be another backstreet unemployed guy. the drama group I was the wardrobe mistress and we serve in the, the banquet hall in the castle every summer in June. It's been going on now for about uh, 12 years. Some of the wenches are elderly people and they do love this type of thing. I'm a neighbourhood worker for the elderly and disabled. We go around visiting housebound people and we also have a housebound club once a week. Uh, I do the lunch clubs twice a week and on a Saturday we have uh, a lunch club for uh, people who don't have home helps at the weekend. We're the only one in Edinburgh that has this lunch club.
Meanwhile, along at the Society's Art Centre, it's off with the medieval garb and on with rehearsals for a summer production. What do you want? Uh, me? I? Uh, well, um, I'm sorry, I'm bold enough uh, through Craig Miller. Uh, a what? Um, I'm on way! I'm on way! Well, I'm glad you're not upset about it. Listen, I've got a job today. Aye, so have we, protecting our house. Aye, nobody's bringing a motorway down our street while we're living here. Look, son, we don't like being pushed around in Craig Miller. And if you so much as start your motorway, every family in the street will be able to stop you. Well, I've just got one thing to say to you. Aye? Help! Help! I had lived in Craig Miller all my life and I knew many, many very talented people. My own father was a Scottish fiddler and uh, there was a lot of talent in the area. Anyway, eventually I joined the school mothers club and suggested with the rest of the mothers that we put on a festival. We had a clue. We knew Edinburgh had a, an Edinburgh International Festival, so why not a people's festival? But the headmaster said, that's a jolly good idea. I will show you how to do it. I will not do it for you, but I'll show you how to do it. And really, that was probably the best advice, the best way to start it. For to this day, it's run like this, with ordinary people running it and us getting professional help where we need it. The Festival Society hopes to streamline its administration system using a microcomputer, and it's making sure children get as much experience with computers as possible. Some of the young unemployed, in fact, the new technology had passed by, um, said that someday, even to get a pint of beer, you might have to work a computer. Um, and could we, the community, not um, take that up on their behalf? So it has taken us a number of years, but we finally, in fact, achieved it. Disco, in fact, fulfills two functions. Um, they, in fact, run at the after-school clubs and the youth clubs, but we also do outside functions um, as part of fundraising to support our activities. The Festival Society has become internationally famous for its work in community development, with some countries copying its methods. In fact, society members say more interest is shown by other governments than by our own. The world, in fact, has beaten the path to Craig Miller. And when we were researching during the EEC program, we took a look at who had come during a particular year. We were astonished to find that in that particular year we were looking at Her Majesty the Queen, the Prime Minister, the American Ambassador, an official delegation from Russia, and another one from China had been to Craig Miller as well as umpteen people from all over. Something was telling us that there was a lot happening in Craig Miller, that the creativity was coming out of this community. You're saying that Craig Miller is rather unique as compared to, say, Easter House or Bootle down south? Not only there, but when I gave a seminar in Washington, D.C., and they had around me the people from various agencies from all over the country, they said, yes, we've done most of the things that you talk about, but we haven't caught on to the idea of the creativity. We haven't really worked on that one. And I think it's because in America there's a heavy technological overlay, and they don't, it doesn't come out to the same degree. What do you think could be done uh, immediately to, to help Craig Miller, the situation here? 
Well, the Festal Society in its plan, the Gentle Giant, Comprehensive Plan for Action, which was published and given to the government, the local authorities, the EEC, made the recommendations. The whole idea of what we call in its fullest sense creative shared government, or Helen sometimes refers to it as the cooperate approach, really breaks the pattern. It says you can have a partnership between the people in the community and the whole array of the wider community, whether that's government or universities or any other institutions, and working together, you can network a new pattern, the network that comes out and has emerged, which is what is the Festival Society is about. And the Craig Miller Festival Society is one of the best local groups that exist in Edinburgh, and the city council is perfectly happy to cooperate with them, has been doing so for a long time, and one of the recent uh, things that has come out of that is the um, improvement to the back greens in, the, uh, in Craig Miller, uh, fencing, new fencing, um, bin stores, all sorts of local things. When, when we had the Craig Miller um, representatives here in chambers in February this month, they said then that there had been a marked improvement in morale because of these small things which had come about because of the cooperative approach between the Craig Mellor Festival Society and the city. Well, they, the, the city fathers went halfway down the street during the time of the Lord Provost Committee's pilot scheme for Craig Miller. The Festival Society and the city worked very closely together at that particular time. But somehow we human beings have a, have a problem of forgetting the lessons we've already learned. We actually get somewhere and then it's, it's as though we did, never did it. People will always say that we're not doing enough, and uh, I have to admit, we're all, they're always right. You can go on and on and on doing things. Um, in this coming year, the, year just, the council year just about to begin, we will be increasing the money available for council house maintenance by 24%, by a quarter. It is far and away the biggest increase in expenditure in any area of this council and of course uh, council housing is about 60 percent of our job council house maintenance money is going up by a quarter and still we'll be told we're not doing enough the festival society believes it can reverse the decline that started when the eec withdrew its support a much closer working relationship with the city council would be the starting point there is resources there's urban aid money msc EEC money, and what we are saying is that we advocate in our book, The Gentle Giant, that there's a corporate approach, a different kind of corporate approach. It's actually in working on the structures what this society have set up here. We have structures where the folk take part not only in the decision making, but in the, in the action for their area. And if we could have this kind of corporate approach, but it needs a political commitment. It needs, the politicians must in fact agree to do it. Well, the first thing, I would say, would be to adopt a much more positive approach to the housing, to say, look, we want to make this housing attractive and desirable again. Secondly, I think they should call a meeting, that's the local councils, with the Craig Miller Festival Society and say, yes, we want to take up your initiative. We want to try the corporate approach. We want to work with you. We believe you've got the potential and see if we can start to improve the quality of life in this area again. It's clear Craig Miller is a community in crisis. Reports drawn up by the Festival Society outlining the extent of the problem have been submitted to Lothian Region, the City Council and the Scottish Office. But so far there has been no response. The Society is now urging the Scottish Secretary to visit the area and see for himself the deterioration. Craig Miller is saying that unless something drastic is done to restore morale and give hope, the community is in grave danger of going under. Meanwhile, in the district itself, the fight continues.